My wife and I have a nephew who is an absolute Notre Dame fanatic. He loves everything about the Fighting Irish. I was able to acquire this pin blank from Michael Harden over at Stadium Pin Blanks. It is a piece of wood from the stadium. It also came with a certificate of authenticity. And I picked up this pin kit. This is, this is an elegant monarch from Classic Nib. And I really like this kit. If you take a close look at the nib, it's got little crosses on it. So I thought that was very fitting for this blank. So today, we're going to go ahead and build this blank. And then it's going to get put away because we've decided to give this to my nephew as a Christmas gift at the end of this year. This is going to be a very special pin for my nephew. And the nice thing about this blank is the way the sticker has been placed, I can actually cut the blank from this end. And we'll save this and we'll present that to him along with the certificate and the pin for Christmas. I'm going to go ahead now and just rough up my tube. This will help the glue adhere better to the tube. And now we're ready to get this blank cut, drilled, and glued. We're ready to drill our blank. You will notice that I have marked the center. That's going to help us to drill straight down through the middle of the blank. Get it locked into our vise. Let's lower our bit and punch the center. All right, I'm ready to drill. I'm going to be drilling extremely slow with this blank because it is a weathered piece of wood. It is ex exceptionally dry and I don't want to take any chances of blowing it out. We're going to clear those chips as frequently as possible. Looks like we've got a nice hole right down the center of the blank. Uh, we do on the weathering on this side, we do have some cracks. Uh, you can kind of see it looks like it goes through to the center. So once we get this blank glued up, I will uh, go ahead and drool some thin CA over this side of the blank uh, in an effort to hold those grains of wood together as tightly as possible for turning. I'm ready to glue the tube into my blank. I'll be using medium CA for gluing the tube. And I've brought my thin CA over to help seal those cracks along the top of the blank. I'm going to make sure that tube is just slightly below the surface of the blank. And it's slightly below the surface on the opposite end, so we've got a nice centering of the tube. And now we're going to go ahead and drill a little thin CA over the blank to help seal those fibers. I'm focusing on that main crack down the center of the blank, but I think I'm going to go ahead and just soak the entire surface. Because being that this is the weathered side, it is the side most prone to damage. As I'm turning the blank, I will continually drill CA over the blank to help keep it together uh, so that we, we just don't want to lose this blank. It's a very important piece of history and it's going to be an amazing gift for my nephew. We're going to let that set thoroughly dry and I probably will drool another coat of thin over it if I see the crack. If it doesn't leave a nice uh, solid surface, if it all tends to soak in and I still see the grain uh, or any part of the uh, crack, we will apply more thin CA. I had to do quite a bit of work to this blank because it was weathered on two sides. What I did is I just continually drooled thin CA on the blank over and over again, letting it soak in until basically it just stopped accepting the CA. The opposite two sides look really good. I'm ready now to go ahead and trim the ends of this blank 
level with the tube. I've got the blank chucked up. I expect it to be a little difficult to turn on these two sides because of the amount of CA glue that I soaked it with. Uh, the rest of the blank shouldn't be too bad. I'm just going to take my time and uh, nice, light, easy cuts and see if we can't get this blank trued up. Well, I got to say, that blank turned incredibly easy. This was some really soft wood. I think it looks fantastic. I love the grain. It held together very well. I'm at the point of sanding. Um, I normally don't make it. You can see the weathered marks there where the CA went in. Uh, I normally don't make you guys watch me sand. I'm not going to do that again today. My sanding regimen is 120, 240, 320, and then 400. I'll come back and show you the blank when it is sanded. I'm just kind of feeling along the blank. I've got a nice fit on my bushings. I don't feel any abnormalities. I've got a nice shape here and it really transitions nicely from end to end. So I'll get her sanded up and we'll be back in a few minutes to show it to you. I finished sanding the blank. I've moved it to my non-stick bushings and I've cleaned it with denatured alcohol so I really don't want to touch it with my finger right now. But you can see it looks really nice. This little dark area down here at the bottom, that's where the CA uh, soaked into the crack. You can kind of see the dark area. Uh, that's where I filled it with that CA. But the blank looks great, and I think that'll level out a little bit as I start to put a CA finish on it. So let's go ahead and put a coat of thin on this blank uh, to kind of seal it. That's really going to soak in. It's going to look nice. I'm going to keep it spinning so that the CA dries. Probably take about 60 seconds or so, and I'll be ready for a second coat. I just finished applying five coats of thin CA to my blank. I used regular paper towels for that, uh, as it doesn't really matter with thin CA because it just soaks into the blank. Now I'm going to apply a couple of coats of medium, and I'll be using these AccuWipe paper towels. These are lint-free paper towels. You can get them on Amazon. They were sent to me by Bill Van, and they don't have any quilting, so I don't have issues with streaking on the blank. They lay down the uh, CA glue really nice and level. We'll just put a bead on there. Notice I'm wiping back and forth a couple times, and I'm wiping the excess off onto my nonstick bushings. I'm going to start building a surface, a nice solid surface, and I will put probably three coats to start with, and then I'll monitor the blank to make sure um, I do have a, a nice smooth level surface. And you can tell because you can see this line right here that is the light above my head. That line will get super smooth and clear when the surface of the blank is, is ready to, uh, uh, or is finished needing CA applied to it. I just finished my final coat of CA. The blank is dry. I'm going to go ahead now and polish with the Zona paper, and I am going to use that wet. Zona paper comes in six different grits, and it's used for polishing. I'm running at about a thousand RPMs. I just want to treat this kind of like I do with micro mesh. I'm going to build up what looks like a little bit of a slurry. I can't put too much pressure because with this being on my nonstick bushings, if I put a lot of pressure, you can see I can stop the blank. I'm just going to work. You can see the slurry starting to build. We're just going to work from end to end and put a nice, nice smooth surface on it. 
I'm starting to get a good slurry now. That's what I'm looking for. You'll notice the blank looks a little bit dull. It'll actually dull, and then as you work through the different papers, it'll start to polish up and get a really nice shine to it. You can see that the blank has a really nice shine to it. What we're going to do next is we're going to get it off these nonstick bushings. We'll take it back over to the sanding disc, and we'll clean the fingernails up on our uh, squaring jig on both ends of the blank. Then we're going to get it mounted up on a standard mandrel. Uh, I'll go ahead and put a little uh, polish on it and we will buff it and it should turn out really nice. You can see the CA glue fingernail on both ends of the blank. Using the squaring jig, we don't want to put any pressure against the wheel because we don't want to remove any of the wood or brass tube. This is the perfect length. We just want to kiss the wheel just enough to remove that fingernail. Before I put this blank back onto a mandrel, I want to use a deburring tool and just basically chamfer the inside edge of the brass tube. You can see what that what that does right there. It gives a nice little nice little chamfer, and uh, that'll help. And there's also some glue in there. Uh, I'm going to get a small jeweler's file and just clean that excess CA glue out because I don't need any restrictions or any problems when I go to press the parts into the uh, blank. Just going to use a jeweler's file, and we're just going to file against that CA glue. It's almost gone. Just going to look around the blank for any other deposits. Check the other side, there's a little bit right there. And what this will do is it'll, it'll allow the pin components to press in much easier. If you have some CA glue in there or epoxy or whatever you happen to use to glue your medium to your tube, um, when you press it in, it, it's, going to, it's going to cause additional friction because the tube, the size of the tube is smaller due to the CA glue around it or the, the layer of glue around it. And it causes additional friction. Your parts don't want to, don't want to slide in as easily. And uh, since the tube is smaller because of the additional material, it can cause the tube to expand, which I've seen that split the blank. So you want to take very good care to clean out everything from inside that tube. One last thing I want to do to clean out the inside of this tube is I recently bought a drain cleaning kit and it came with a tiny bottle brush. And this is perfect because I can put it right inside of my tubes and it will clean any dust or debris out of the tubes. And I've got a really nice, take a look at that clean surface in there. I have no debris and I have no restrictions at all around the tube. So I feel like I'm going to get a really nice fit with my components. I'm going to use a little Renaissance wax on my blank. And the way I've been using this is I just rub my finger in the wax and get a little bit on my finger. I'll start my lathe. I'm going to slow it down a little bit. It's running kind of fast right now. We're going to take it down. I don't know, about 500 RPMs, and I'm just going to start applying it with my finger. Now what's going to happen is when you first put the wax on, it's going to be very slick and it's going to slide freely, no problem, but after a while of working the wax into the blank, you'll start to notice um, a little bit of friction against your finger, and when you notice that friction, that's when you know you've worked the wax in thoroughly and it's starting to dry and it's ready to be buffed off of the blank. I can start to feel the drag. You just feel a little bit of drag on your finger as the blank pulls. It doesn't hurt or anything, but you can just kind of, you can feel it. This blank is now ready to be buffed. I've got my buffing wheels on the lathe. I'm running at about 1100 RPMs. I'm gonna apply just a little bit of blue rosin. You really do not want to buff too much faster than 1100. If you build too much heat, it can actually cause problems with the CA glue. You can see the blank starting to get really shiny. Don't want to hold it in one position too long because that can actually burn the burn the glue. So you just kind of keep the blank, just work it back and forth, keep it moving. 
and you can see it's really starting to pick up a nice shine. I like to change the angle that I buff. Now we'll take it to the finishing wheel. A lot of people ask what these wheels are made of. They're just cotton wheels. And take a look at that finish. Is that incredible? I'm using a Monarch pin kit from Classic Nib. I absolutely love this kit. I think it's beautiful. I think the crosses were a really nice touch. Uh, it works just like a Sierra kit. Presses together the same way. You simply press the cap in and the front part slides in. I did have one problem when I was pressing it together. This wood is old and it's soft. And unfortunately, take a look at this. See it right there? It literally compressed. Let me see if I can get you a, a close-up of that. Actually, let me do it this way. Well, there we go. Notice how it crushed. It pushed away from the edge of the tube and crushed. Let's pull this apart. Maybe that's easier to see. I'm super disappointed that that happened, but I'm lucky in that I have a second half of the blank, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and turn the second half, and we should end up having a nice, uh, a nice pin for my nephew. I'll just knock the cap out with a punch tool, and uh, we should be good to go. This is the same punch that I've been using in my blank squaring jig. I just removed it for this process. It fits perfectly inside of the tube. We're gonna grip that tube with some of these special rubber coated pliers. I'm gonna take a standard hammer. I like to put my the palm of my hand, the cap in the palm of my hand. Otherwise, if you don't, it can fly off and basically when it hits the ground, you can actually damage it. So we're gonna hold it tightly, give it a couple of good pops with the hammer. The cap hardware is free. And now we'll prepare our second blank and get it turned. Uh, I'm not going to turn the second one on camera. I will come back when it's complete. And I'll go ahead and show you the pressing together of this blank uh, as we finish our Notre Dame pin. I want to give you guys an update on the Notre Dame blank. It turned out fair, pretty fair, except I had a little issue. You see all the little dots in it? See those little dots? Let me flip over a little more. Look at that right there. You can see them really well. The CA finish evidently had bubbles in it. And when I polished it down with the Zona paper, I opened those bubbles up and they filled with the slurry. So now I've got a rather unsightly blank that I'm going to need to sand back down and refinish. So that's what we're going to do tonight. I finished turning my blank and I couldn't be happier with how this thing turned out. Just look at that. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm ready to press it into a kit. And I came up with this idea. Now, I don't know if, if anyone has ever done this before. If, if they have, I'll gladly concede the idea to them. But last time I attempted to press this cap into the other blank, I ended up crushing an end of my blank because the wood is soft. I went and grabbed one of my worn out bushings. The nice thing about this is when I insert it in the blank, I'll be pressing against the shoulder of the bushing against the tube and it will protect the blank from crushing. I've put the blank in the pin press and I'm ready to start applying some pressure and pressing the blank together. I'm just gonna go nice and slow. Okay. I wanna take a look at the blank and see is there anything that I wanna hide or anything that I don't wanna hide. And this blank is actually just pretty well gorgeous all the way around. I don't really, looks incredible to me. So I'm not too worried about this one. Let's go ahead and finish the press. There we go. And now if we take a look at the end of our blank, whoops, you will see that it is absolutely perfect. There are no crushes on the end of the blank. So that's a great little tip that anyone can use and it could save you a pin in the future or a blank in the future. That is just a beautiful kit and a beautiful pen. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I couldn't be happier with how this pen turned out. 
I was a little disappointed when I crushed the first blank because my hope was, uh, since it had a nice label on it, was to give uh, my nephew the pen as well as the other half of the blank as kind of a keepsake. But I'll tell you what I'm most proud of. I think that this idea of using a bushing to press a pen together and potentially saving a blank I don't know why I didn't think of this years ago. I've never seen anybody else do it. I don't know if I'm the originator or not, but I am stoked about this and I will now keep all of my burned out bushings and use them to protect my pins because I have damaged pins before in the pressing process. And this virtually guarantees it's going together as smooth as silk. Hey, I wanna really thank you for hanging out with me. Uh, I want you to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon, guys, and have a great evening.